Vin was coming in for his first day of, of shooting in there. We'd done a bunch of like setups, work and whatnot. And it's unpleasant, so everyone's wearing like sort of the equivalent of like a hazmat suit in there. And, <laughs> and, so, and I'm like, guys, can we, can we just sort of maybe lose the masks for a minute or two? Because it's very difficult to convince <laughs> someone to shoot in this for two uh, weeks if we're all looking God, like... that's funny. Hi, I'm Vin Diesel. Uh, and I'm Dave Wilson, and uh, we're going to do our scene breakdown for you from Bloodshot. All right, I'm, I'm gonna pause here just to give a little context of all of this. So, no one would let us shut a tunnel down for the two weeks we were filming this. So we built the whole thing in South Africa. We filmed the whole movie. Um, it is this awesome, uh, massive set that we built um, that we filled with not flour, uh, even though it's a Baker Jack flour, it's flammable, which not a lot of people know. I don't actually know what it was, but it sort of kept us all very energized. So while we were filming in there, <laughs> this is the, the little story I want to share up front because it is. Uh, it's not hazardous, like the, it was some sort of compound that they made that we could shoot in, but it's unpleasant and uh, to be in there. And sort of Vin was coming in for his first day of, of shooting in there. We'd done a bunch of like setups, work and whatnot. And it's unpleasant, so everyone's wearing like sort of the equivalent of like a hazmat suit in there. And, <laughs> and, so, and I'm like, guys, can we, can we just sort of maybe lose the masks for a minute or two? Because it's very difficult to convince <laughs> someone to shoot in this for two uh, weeks if we're all looking God, like, that's funny. It was anyway. worth it though. Oh, man. I should say that the idea for like the, the flower, I, I knew there was an attack on a convoy, and but I wanted to visually do something that made it sort of iconic. And I love the sort of the red and white colors of Bloodshot. But you know, I didn't know what I wanted to be, and I spent this sort of rather odd weekend on on YouTube looking at all these Russian dashboard cam accidents. And then I found this one uh, of this truck crashing into a building, this bakery truck, and this flour going everywhere. And it was even in that sort of like little sort of low res uh, sort of YouTube video, it was remarkably visually impressive. So uh, when we sort of came upon time to to put it into a into the scene, it was it's one of those moments where you have something in your head and you never quite know how it's going to turn out and then it surpasses all your expectations and you and it's just it's totally an amazing right. feeling. We we used um, JJ and uh, our, Troy and Troy. Troy and Johnny Yu and um, they had just come off of, of John Wick and they were so hell-bent on trying to do something brand new. They were coming, they were asking us to be a part of this because they felt there could be some opportunity for a different style of fighting. There's a viciousness to this that plays to the character uh, and it's not most superheroes that have superhero powers. Um, you just kind of rely on the fact that they could lift up a car or something. The, the, uh, the kind of dynamic approach that, that the choreography uh, employs is what makes Bloodshot kind of so unique. We worked so hard that there were injuries before we even started filming. But that was a testament to everybody's commitment to really trying to make something different and feel different. I can't tell you how many people have been responding to how the action feels and why it feels different and why it feels appropriate for this kind of new launch of mm -hmm. a, a new way of telling the superhero shower. Wait, what's that? This was, I think, the very first shot we actually develop the sort of movement of the nanites for. So we pre the whole sequence and then JJ, uh, like Ben said, JJ Perry came in and then they sort of, they had stunt on top of that. So it's sort of rudimentary blocked out in pre and we know the story we want to tell. And then JJ comes in and he adds all like the sort of, like that visceral quality to the action that, that Ben was talking about. And then, the, and then on, you know, once we have our plates, obviously we go in and we start figuring out what the nanites are going to be. That was, um, and I, I prefer to do, sort of look develop in, in the context, in a shot, than rather sort of in, on a blank slate. We went through many iterations, but I, I, I 
overly prepared for things, so I had a ton of reference material and a sort of almost a rubbermatic of the movement of the nanites that I wanted to. So I gave that to Chris Harvey, my visual effects supervisor, and sort of proposed this movement to them. That was always, I mean, you've seen like liquid metal and you've seen healing before and you've seen all of that. So it was about creating something that felt unique to Bloodshot, which was the idea that like a billion little things that are always working together to serve like his agenda. Um, so there was always like a particular feel to to their sort of organized movement. And uh, so th that took a, a long time, which is always, on a, you know, you're on the right path when something's difficult to do and there isn't like, you can't just point at something and say, make it look like that. So it was a, a long process of discovery. I'd say it took us maybe eight months before that, yeah, I saw the first version of that shot. But we started like, you know, while we were still filming to sort of look develop it. Um, and then there was, you know, there's that version of them when we see them as particles and then there's the endoscopic version when we actually get up close to them. So there was some multiple stages of their look development. Oh man, it is him. Come on, come on, come on. What? He's here! They finished it and he's right bloody here! This shot right here, we did many, many times to get this right, and it's very difficult to do. Uh, my, my, my first uh, focus puller, uh, Jimmy Jensen, who's uh, like the best in the business, is shooting completely blind on like an 800 millimeter lens where the like range of focus is half an inch, and we're, sh and we're shooting in full, and Vin is running full tilt at the camera. I, like, I don't know how we got the shot but at the end of the day. But like, it was one of the, again one of those moments where he sort of emerged from the fog and you see it in slow motion and you were just like it's awesome. money. It's awesome. Uh, the chest that you'll see in this is like is all all, all digital. Yes, it was uh, sort of impossible to do as uh, practically. Vin is too humble. Just to every single one of these is him. Like there was no like. I, like this, because it was like this big personal moment where like you feel like the film has been building for like 30 minutes to this scene. Like not, you know, being on his back or not seeing like the what, he, what he's going through to achieve his objective would have been a sort of travesty. So to his testimony, like I said, he stayed for days in that unpleasantness. So that one there where they sort of you drop kicks the guy in the back of the car. Most of the stunts are done practically. That's a, a dummy that we ratcheted in on some wires and like, like just un, uh, no one could sustain it. I don't think even the dummy survived. But it was, it was to your to your credit, this was as much as, as comfortable as you are with CGI, you opted to do this whole scene practical and that's that's awesome. There, I, I would it, say- it plays. Like other than like you know the nanites and the face being yeah. blown off, yes. Like I mean the majority in terms of, of stunt. Yeah, the, yeah. The mar majority of the scene is is wire removal. It's, it's amazing awesome. how little, uh, from a visual effects standpoint, we had to spend sort of making yeah. this, miss the scene what it is. That's awesome. It's the moment when when bloodshot becomes blood, bloodshot comes alive. It's a kind of exciting moment in the film, and I'm looking back at the significance of what a scene that. We just loved, it, but now seeing it as the first time Bloodshot recognizes who he is and what he's capable of, and that's awesome. And we wanted to, we had we had a whole stunt department that was de determined to make this like no other scene that they've seen and that anyone's seen, and everybody just worked so hard in it. Um, it, it, it shows in the sequence, but it's exciting. This yes. Is, this makes me want to see the whole movie right now. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's not good. Thank you for watching our scene breakdown. And be sure to get your tickets uh, March 13th and get them on Fandango. <laughs>